Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the menu for building decision trees in GTO Plus. We will also look at the editor for making changes to your tree. And we'll have a look at how to set up tournaments. In order to build a tree, we will need to enter a range for both players. Please note that both players need a range and not a specific hand. This is because in game theory analysis, it is assumed that both players know the other player's range throughout the hand. So if you were to enter just a single hand, then your opponent would simply know which hand you're holding. So in short, always enter a range for both players. After entering the ranges, enter a board. And now, go to Build Tree to build your tree. In the Tree Builder on the left, you can set whether you want to work in cash game mode or if this is a tournament. For cash game mode, simply enter the effective stacks and the pot. And if relevant, the rake and cap. You can however also set up a sit and go or an MTT. For a sit and go, click the tab here. Enter the starting pot. And the stack size for both OOP and IP. And other than that, the stacks for any other remaining players. And here you can enter the price structure. Should your hand be an MTT, then use the MTT tab. Again, for this, enter the pot. And the stacks for OOP and IP. Here you can enter the stacks for the other players. The only difference with sit and go is that you can also set a number of players. For example, we'll set that there's 100 remaining players with a stack of 2000. And 50 remaining players with a stack of 500. And the same approach applies to the price structure. Here on the right are the options for the tree building instructions. The most important one here is the Advanced tab. However, I will first go over the three other tabs because they are much more straightforward. The fastest way of building a simple tree for no limit hold'em is the Basic tab. For this, just enter the desired bed sizes. So for example, the default setting for a pot of 10 and stacks of 80 is for a flop action to go. Bet 5.25, raise to 15.50, re-raise to 37, and all in for 80. We can also make some changes. For example, I will round the values a bit. Ok, let's build this tree by clicking on Build Tree. And we can now use the 2D Navigator to see how our tree looks. And here we see that the sequence is indeed bet 6, raise to 15, re-raise to 36, and all in for 80. So, the basic tab for the tree builder is pretty straightforward. The tree builder for limit hold'em is even more straightforward. If you play limit hold'em, then go to the tab here. Here you can enter the bet sizes for a flop, turn and river. And here you can enter the maximum number of bets for each phase. In limit hold'em, the flop action will usually be for a single blind, and the turn and river actions will be for double that amount. And at most, four bets can be made at each phase of the board. If we build the tree under this tab, and go to the 2D navigator, 
then the flop action is indeed bet 1, raise to 2, raise to 3, raise to 4. And if we go to a turn line, then the action proceeds as bet 2, raise to 4, re-raise to 6, and cap for 8. Finally, we have the Rebuild tab. Suppose that you have a tree that you're satisfied with and you want to use that exact same tree again, but for different ranges or a different board. Then just enter those new ranges. Or enter that board. Go to Build Tree. Select the Rebuild tab and click on Rebuild. And you have now built an identical tree, but for the adjusted ranges and boards. And now we'll take a look at the Advanced Tree Builder. In the Advanced Tree Builder, you can set a strategy for OOP on the left and IP on the right. On top, there's a few general settings for each player. And below that, the option to set a betting strategy for the flop, turn and river. Most importantly, the first field for each player is the default bet. If you don't provide any specific instructions for a situation, then the tree builder will always just use the default bet. The first general option is, with only two bets left, get the money in smoothly. Now this is a pretty important feature and it should usually be on. It means that if not much money is left to be bet, then the tree builder will use geometric sizing to get the final two bets in. To demonstrate this feature, let's first take a look at the tree where we don't use this option. I will build the tree. Now we are currently not using any instructions, so the tree builder is simply instructed to use the default bet of 75% everywhere. Let's now go to the editor and click on Import Tree to load the tree. So, with these instructions, the betting strategy is bet 7.5, raise to 26, re-raise to 72, and all in for 80. If I mouse over the bets, the first bet is 75% of the pot. The first race is 74% of the pot, which is not exactly 75%, and this is because the tree builder rounds all betting sizes. The third bet is again 74%, but the final push is a race for only 5%, which is far too tiny for regular play. So the problem is that the final bet sizes don't apply to the situation. To get around this, we have the smoothly option in the tree builder. And this will adjust the final bet sizes so that the size of the final bets makes practical sense. I will just demonstrate by turning it on for both players. And now the tree has changed a bit so that the betting now goes bet 7.5, raise to 26, all in for 80 which makes a lot more practical sense. So, let's now take a look at the custom settings for both players. Here, you can enter custom bet sizes for each situation. For example, on the flop, the first bet, where OOP leads out. This field lets you enter the check raising size. And here you can enter the three bet size for OOP. These betting fields are arranged into two sections. The first section is for when OOP leads out, and the second section is for when OOP begins by checking. And in IP's field, the same approach applies. So the left part is for when OOP has bet and IP races, and the second part is for when OOP has checked and IP has the option to bet out. So you can just enter any bet size that you like for each scenario. If you leave a field empty, then the default bet will be used. If you want to leave a bet out entirely, 
For example, if we don't want OOP to lead out on the flop, then just enter 0 for the bet size. And if we go to the 2D navigator, then indeed OOP no longer leads out on the flop. You can also enter multiple bet sizes. And indeed, OOP now leads out with three different sizes. And in case of making a race, you can also use X-type input. For example, I'll set that IP min races if OOP bets by entering 2X for IP's race field. And indeed, IP now min races for every bet made by OOP. So if OOP bets 5, then IP will raise to 10. And if OOP bets 6, then IP will raise to 12. There's a code field in the upper right here. If you enter the code R here, then it will prevent the tree from rounding. So for example, earlier we saw that bets were often not exactly 75%, but slightly rounded. With the code R, the betting amounts are no longer rounded, and the betting percentages will exactly be 75%. You can use the code M to prevent races that are smaller than a min race. For example, if we instruct IP to raise only 10%, then his race, when OOP bets 7.5, will be rounded up to 15. You can also set the blind size with the code B. I'll set that the blinds are 10. And now, any bet below the size of the blinds will be rounded up. So when OOP were to bet 75% into a pot of 10, then this would normally be a bet of 7.5. But because of the code B10, this will be rounded up to 10. For more codes, click on the question mark icon to be brought to the website. Similarly, instructions for all the fields can also be found on the website, if you click on Help. And here some additional options will be discussed, such as geometric bet sizing, which you can find here. For brevity, I will leave it out with this video, but you can just check for yourself. Finally, for turn and river spots, you can set a separate strategy for C-bets, donks and pro-bets. For example, enter 40C for C-bets of 40%, 50P for pro-bets of 50%, and 60D for donks of 60%. If you want to leave out a certain bet type, then enter 0. So enter 0D to leave out donk-bets on the turn. So if we go to the editor and check what happens after the flop action goes check bet call, then with 0D input, OOP will no longer make a donk bet. If you want to store your settings in these fields for later use, then go to edit profiles and store your profile. The profiles will be stored in the lower left. To load your settings at a later point, double-click your profile. Finally, if you have a tree and you want to make changes to it, then go to the editor. Click on Import Tree. I'll click on a decision to add an action to it. And I'll add a bet size of 90%. We still need to define what happens after this action. I'll say that I want to use Geometric Sizing. 
with three bets of 40%. After making your edits, click on Accept Changes to load your edited tree. Should you want to use different colors for the actions, then go to the editor. Click on Edit Action Colors. And here you can use RGB codes to set whichever colors you like. For RGB codes, just Google for RGB colors, and there's a lot of websites that will show you which code will lead to a certain color. So, that's it for this video on the tree building options. I hope that you enjoyed this video.